Hey, what's up, world? Thanks for tuning in. This is Copper Color Tie. Please subscribe, share, like today's video. America unearthed. Giant aborigines found in ancient mounds of America. A lot of people know about ancient mounds found in America, but I felt people should also know about the massive tall human giants and massive animals found inside some of these ancient mounds of America. Here are some brief information about ancient giants found in America. All giants did not look the same. All giants were not the same size. The ancient giants found in America could range from 7 feet tall to a staggering 18 feet tall. Wow. Some of these giants were aboriginals. Evidence show some giants thrived on their own and with their own. Evidence also show that some giants were even a part of many indigenous aboriginal tribes. Some giants thrived, shared some of the same customs and burial sites with many of the indigenous aboriginal tribes as well. Before I get into it about the ancient giants, I want people to have an idea of where the ancient giant skeletons were found and could possibly still be. So, let's get it. When the Europeans first arrived to what is now southeastern United States, they encountered a negroid, often described as copper-colored culture of people that later became known as the Mound Builders. Mound Builders is a general term referring to the indigenous inhabitants of North America who constructed various styles of earthen mounds for burial, residential, and ceremonial purposes. The cities consisted of enormous conical pyramids, excavated areas, vast terraces, irrigation canals, wells, ponds, underground passages, and causeways, all of them constructed in a manner so substantial that they remain perfectly discernible until this day. There were basically three types of mounds that were constructed by the mound builders. The most common mounds are conical mounds, which are mounds that are cone or oval shaped. Many of these types of mounds were for burial purposes. Burial mounds ranged in height from 3 feet to 25 feet. Conical mounds that weren't burial mounds can have a height up to 70 feet. The second type of mounds is effigy mounds, which are mounds that are built in the shape of animals, symbols, religious, or human figures. It is believed that effigy mounds were utilized as sacred ceremonial grounds, which enhanced communication with the ancient ancestor spirits, along with augmenting the powers of healing. Hey guys. Let's take a look at the mysterious alligator mound in Granville, Ohio. What we can see from the ground level is just a pile of dirt that doesn't make much sense. But let's look at it from the air. As we go up, these irregular mounds start to take the shape of a large animal. You can see the head, the long body, and all four legs. And there is also a long, curving tail. This was built at least a thousand years ago, so the biggest question is, who could have seen it from the sky at that time? The blatant truth is that we don't really know when it was built. In fact, we don't even know if it is an alligator at all. Modern experts say that it could be an underwater panther or an opossum. We used the same technology to guide our aircrafts in 1920s. Large concrete arrows called beacon arrows were placed on the ground to help navigation and airplanes follow 
found a few large stones placed on the alligator mound. So it is possible that once upon a time, the entire structure was covered with stones. This would have been an amazing sight to see from the sky and would also be visible from a much higher altitude. But it gets much better. Archaeologists noticed that the stones were burnt because they were repeatedly set on fire. Now, imagine the entire mound set on fire at night. It would be a fantastic signal that would also work during nighttime. This is the same technology that we used or still use by installing airway beacon towers to navigate airplanes. The last type of mounds are platform mounds or temple mounds, which are flat top mounds that were utilized to house temples for the leaders, sometimes for residences, sometimes for observing the waterways for unwanted visitors. What is probably the oldest large-scale mound ciphered in the United States is the Watson Break Mounds. It has been predated to the Middle Archaic Period, 3400 BCE, which would predate the erection of the pyramids in Egypt. So if Africa is the motherland, why do these mounds, especially the Watson Break Mound, predate the erection of the pyramids in Egypt? That means around this time, the copper-colored aboriginal people of America were way more advanced than the people out there in Africa. The pyramids haven't even existed when the Watson break mounds were in full effect. So why is there a disconnection with the Native American and these ancient mounds found in America? Because the Native American used scaffold and bundle burials. They did not build mounds. Who did? The indigenous copper color melanated aborigines did. The original inhabitants of this land, of every land. Okay? Not only did we build these ancient mounds, we also build these ancient cliff dwellings. This is an ancient cliff dwelling we are looking at now. That has to be at least a couple of thousands years old. All right. And each one of these cliff dwellings are smack dab in the middle of the forest, right across from the cliff dwellings. It's the forest. All right. This is a different cliff dwelling right here. Again, right smack dab in the middle of the forest across the way from water and you used to be able to have access up there okay but of course since foreigners um, gain control and power only they have access to that right there and all the ancient artifacts found inside those ancient cliff dwellings Anything and everything that has to do with the ancient mounds and ancient cliff dwellings of America, foreigners of this land will always tell you it has everything to do with the Native American or modern day Native American type, which is 100% inaccurate. It's not true. They use scaffold and bundle burials. They did not build mounds nor cliff dwellings. Foreigners to this land will never tell you they found copper-colored aboriginal skeletons on these ancient historic grounds, nor will they tell you they found giant copper-colored aboriginal indigenous skeletons on this ancient historic grounds, neither. That will debunk their false history and education and expose the truth that indigenous melanated aborigines were here in America first. And have always been here. And even further back. In a 
America alone, there have been over 1,500 newspaper accounts as far back as the 1800s. In the island of Catalina, California, in 1920, 3,781 skeletons of a race of blonde head giants were found and exhumed. In fact, there are real accounts of exhumed giants with double rows of teeth, and in some cases, six fingers. If this is so, where is the evidence? Many have accused the Smithsonian Institution of covering up these discoveries, locking the giant skeletons away and depriving the public of their findings. But the Smithsonian insists that no physical specimens of such creatures remain, and that they never existed. What is most remarkable concerning them is that among the quantity of human bones they contain, there are found specimens belonging to men of large stature or specimens belonging to men of large size and who must have been nearly allied to a race of giants or and who must have been nearly unified or united to a race of giants. While the idea of prehistoric giants inhabiting the United States may seem strange to us today or the result of some fantastic hoax, in the 19th century, reports of archaeological evidence regarding giants were commonplace. In addition, one must remember that America was an agrarian society at this time and its citizens were in regular contact with their fields as well as the mounds and the remains they found while plowing. Knowledge of the giants was part of the current thinking. Potomac River Giant the skeleton of a giant Indian may be seven or more feet in height who died and was buried about the time Christ was born has been unearthed from prehistoric burial grounds. This is the important part. Apart from the huge size of the Algonquin Indian who wait, stop right there. Who were the Aborigines before the Aborigines, the Amerindians? What about before the Amerindians, the Anasazi? What? are some of the language that they spoke, Elconquin. Next important part, this aborigine, key word, this aborigine must have been a hunter. Remember what Malcolm X said about the aborigine. He gave you a clear description of what an aborigine is supposed to look like and what an aborigine is. If you haven't seen it, go look it up. This is also important. Another Ohio giant. The skull is large enough to fit as a helmet over the average man's head. The skeletons are thought to be of those of mound builders. Who else did they call melanated people of America? Mound builders. Missouri mounds are a gold mine. Findings established that the Coeller farm was the site of a village populated by 500 Indians of the Middle Mississippian culture. These aborigines predated the tribal American Indian, so these aborigines predated the Native American. According to the NAGPRA, laws once again being misapplied eventually led to a once thriving tourist destination being shut down and the skeletons it exhibited being buried by a local Indian tribe who have no genetic relation to the skeletons they claim to protect. Gigantic man buried next to ferocious panther. These mounds vary in height from 8 to 30 feet. They were built by the aborigines of this country hundreds of years ago to serve as burial places for the distinguished dead. There was a skeleton of a very large individual buried by the side of the bones of a panther. However, the skulls of this panther was very large teeth very long and sharp. It would take a mound builder of a great deal of nerve to attack a beast of this size. Big Whopper, 18 feet and counting, half a mile north of West Hickory. They dig up an enormous helmet of iron corroded with rust. They kept digging and found a sword measured nine feet in length. They enlarged the hole, discovered bones of two enormous feet. They followed up the digging, finally unearthed the well-preserved remains of an enormous giant belonging to a species of the human family. When his giant ship was in flesh, he must have stood 18 feet tall in his stockings. Wow.